So now we're gonna be taking a look at Kester solder and comparing it to the solder that I normally use. I'm almost running out here and I've heard a lot of good things about Kester solder. So I wanted to buy some and give it a shot. A lot of people say that when you try this, you can't go back. I thought this was gonna make a good, is it worth it episode because it's really expensive for me. If I look on Canadian Amazon, here is the Kester solder for like hundred bucks versus the one I normally get, which is like 17. Now you have to realize that this is only 100 grams while this is giving you about more than four times that. You can see it's about one pound or 454 grams of solder that you get, but it's still more expensive. This is about 17 cents per gram, whereas this comes in at like 25 cents per gram. This is just in Canada. I realized most of my viewers are actually in the US, and if you look in the US, Amazon, it's like significantly more affordable. I don't know why it's so much more affordable in the US, but this actually ends up being cheaper per gram. So this is like 10 cents per gram, whereas this ends up being 12 cents per gram. So for this Kester solder, you actually do get a more solder for your money than when you buy a 100 gram roll for 12 bucks like this. If this even ends up being as good as this solder, it's just worth getting <laughs> if you're in the US. So we've got two bags, interestingly enough. And here is the Kester solder, very heavy because there's quite a lot of it in here. So this is leaded solder. I did get the exact same alloy that I normally use. It's the Eutectic Tin Lead Alloy 6337. As you can see right there, 63% tin, 37% lead. And this one here is actually a tiny bit thinner than the one I normally use. So here's the one I normally use, and I'm hoping that this is gonna fit on my roll here. It does look like it will. It'll take up a whole slot up top, but I'll just be able to move my thinner solder down here. But anyways, here's the solder I normally use. It is also 6337, but it is 0.6 millimeters. So it's a little bit thicker than this one. So here is the Kester solder. You can see just how much more solder you get on this roll versus this one. And you can see it is like slightly thinner. So I have a link to both of these types of solder in the description if you're interested. I highly recommend this one actually if you are not soldering as much and you still want like a nice tin lead alloy. I've been using this for quite a while now and I'm really, really enjoying it. So here on the top is the Kester solder versus the one on the bottom. So you can see it's not like a major difference. Let me just see quickly if this fits well on my stand because that's pretty important for me. And yeah, this fits great. So this is a perfect stand for this stuff. If you guys are looking for a nice stand, they also sell this with just one if you don't want both. I like the two layer one because I can have my wick down here as well on a roll because I much prefer this format of my wick instead of those little annoying plastic containers. Uh, this is much easier to use. So love this stand. I actually bought two of them, one for my wire as well. But now this Kester solder is gonna be taking up this whole space up here. So I'll probably just put my smaller diameter solder down here when I need something super small. The other thing we need to take into account here is that there's actually more flux in the Kester solder by weight. This is a little confusing because we have 2% flux by weight on this one here and we have 3.3% flux by weight for the Kester one. However, we do have to factor in the case that this one is 0.6 millimeters and this one is 0.5 millimeters. So it's going to be a bit different, the math for flux per millimeter, for example, like the length. So even though by weight, this actually has 65% more flux than this one, by millimeter, like by the actual length that we feed into like a joint, for example, the Kester one still actually has a bit more flux. It has about 15 or 14.5% more flux per millimeter than this other Sane Smart leaded solder does, which is actually kind of a significant amount. And I'm wondering if we're gonna see the difference there. So alloy wise, these are identical. However, the flux being used is going to be a bit different probably as well as the amount of flux that we're feeding into a joint per millimeter of solder is going to be a little bit more with this one. However, we have to note that this will also probably add to how much cleanup we have to do, even if we're not using flux with the solder. So let's actually start soldering with these things. I actually have some PCBs here from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. As you'll see with the PCBs we're using today, PCBWay offers high quality PCB fabrication, and they also offer services for CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, and all kinds of stuff. They're also currently running their eighth project design contest here and you can actually win cash prizes as well as raspberry pies or multimeters you can submit your project anytime between now and the end of january 2026 then you've got a judging period during the month of february and finally they will announce the winners in march and if you need some boards for your project you can just go to pcb instant quote and once you upload your zip file you can make some tweaks to what kind of materials they're using as well as the color of the solder mask and things like that so thanks to pcbway for sponsoring the video and we can get into testing some solder i think we can start by soldering on some larger pads here and i'm going to use this part of the ruler here because these are the exact same size and they are not attached to anything else it's not like these have traces that go somewhere else or they're not attached to a ground plane. So we can go under the microscope here and we can start with actually some smaller pads like maybe this one here. 
and this one here. For the purposes of keeping the solder separate, I'm gonna be using two different iron tips, one for the Kester and one for the Sane Smart solder. This way I can be sure I'm not mixing the different solder alloys. And obviously we're gonna be using the exact same temperature. So first we're just gonna hit this top here with the normal solder that I use. And again, we're not gonna use any extra flux or anything. We're just going to use it with the flux that's in the solder wire, just like that. So that right there is the Sane Smart solder and I'm going to switch tips here and we're going to try this out with the Kester now. All right, so here is the Kester. There we go, that's a little bit nicer and a bit of a fair comparison. All right, we could clean these up and take a look at the two. So the one on the right hand side is going to be our Kester solder. And honestly, I cannot tell the difference whatsoever between like the color of the two. They both look like 6337 leaded solder to me. So the only difference I did see was the flux did behave a bit differently. And I think we're gonna see that in action a bit more on these larger pads. So let's do this same exact test. And you can see I'm having to feed more solder in here because there's not quite enough on the iron itself. But yeah, there you go. You can see me in there, hello. This is one of the reasons I love this Eutectic alloy. It's so, so shiny. All right, so now I'll switch my iron tip and we'll try the Kester. So let's try this again. And same kind of properties here. It's not really doing better or worse in my opinion. It's just sort of like it's doing its job as solder. There's just like some oxidation that's being left behind and that might just be the iron tip I'm using. I'm gonna to try to clean it as much as I can. There you go, there's a lot less oxidation on there now. I think there is actually more solder on the top pad, so I'll add just a little bit more here, make it fair. All right, so let's clean these up and take a look at them side by side. So with that test, honestly, the left one is looking a little bit more shiny and even, and I had less trouble with that pad, honestly, getting the solder to look like smooth and non-oxidized. Again, that may just be my iron tip. But let's try the middle ones here while we're at it. So we can stick with the Kester first because that's what I have in my hand. And that is going on the pad nicely. You can see it's nice and shiny. This is a little bit easier than the larger pad. I think the iron tip, I was just having a bit of trouble with the one on the left there. All right, and here is the Sane Smart one. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, my normal solder wire, you can see it does a really solid job with less flux. You can see that how much flux is on the bottom there compared to the top. Honestly, I don't really care about these particular tests too much because I'm not really soldering on large pads like this very often. It's, it's more often gonna be smaller pads like 0201 components and 0402 components and things like that. And maybe you can see, but there are some spots like that the Kester solder puts down of, of flux that is like a little bit difficult to clean with the Q-tube. Um, but we'll do a separate cleaning test in a moment. Let's try tinning up some smaller pads like these here. I will use some extra flux this time with these and we'll use just the MG Chemicals 8341 for this, just like that. And we can start at the bottom with the Kester solder. So there's the Kester and here is the Sane Smart and we can clean those up and take a bit of a closer look at them. All right, so I just turned it so we could fit it in the shot. The right-hand side is gonna be the Kester and the left-hand side is the Sane Smart solder. And honestly, again, looking pretty similar. All right, so next I have similar weights of each of these types of solder. I have the Kester on the right and the Sane Smart on the left. You can see it's a little bit thicker. And we have them on this large copper pad here and I'm just gonna turn on the preheater now. And as this thing heats up to the melting temperature of the solder, we're gonna see sort of how each of the fluxes in each of the solder wire sort of perform. What this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to see how easy it is for the solder to like wet on the pads. If the flux is a little bit better, it's going to have an easier time sort of spreading out on the pad versus just sort of balling up in one spot. So let's let the preheater do its thing and see what the results are. All right, so I just shut off the preheater. Interestingly enough, they actually seem extremely similar in how easy it was for them to wet the pad. You can see the left one did spread out a little bit more, but I think that has to do with the fact that a large majority of the flux ended up pooling up above this one, whereas this one also sort of went above, but there's nowhere for it to spread in that direction. So I think the size of this little pool is a little bit unfair because I think this one would have spread out quite a bit more this way because of the 
flux here that sort of went unused, if that makes sense. But you can see from that test that they were extremely similar and they behaved extremely similarly in terms of how they wet the pad initially. I will say the flux from the Kester does look a little bit more dark than the one from the Saint Smart here. But again, that just might be the fact that there's more in the wire. Uh, so we can try cleaning. But yeah, in terms of color, again, they both look nearly identical, I would say, similar to these other tests we were doing here. And here, I don't really see a huge difference, to be honest. I will say that the Kester did actually wet slightly faster on the pad than the Saint Smart one. You could definitely see the flux starting to bubble and activate a little bit sooner than the flux in the Saint Smart one. How much that's actually going to make a difference when you go to use the solder, you know, I think it's kind of negligible. So I, I think this is an extremely inconclusive test, but it was interesting to see the fact that both of them did spread out really well. And the flux in each of them really did its job, in my opinion, for, for both types of solder. However, what I have been noticing and what I want to try to test here is that the Kester solder seems to have a bit of a more gummy sort of flux in it. So I want to see how easy it is to clean each of these. So on the left here, we'll start with the Saint Smart solder, the one I've been using. And again, we're just going to use the flux that's in the solder wire. And we're just going to tin five of these pads here. All right. So we have that, we'll skip like three pads and do the same thing on the right here with the Kester. So we'll start here and we'll do five, one, two. So we've got the same amount of pads tinned and I got a little solder ball right here to get rid of. Um, so you can see sort of what I mean. I use the exact same temperature and you can see the flux on the right hand side here is definitely like more browned than the one on the left. And there is, you know, quite a bit more flux as you can see. And this stuff is a little bit thick for sure, after it dries, you can see it's like flaking off. It's not really like liquidy. This one's also sort of flaking off. Let's try to clean both of these. I'm gonna use one Q-tip for each first here. I'm just gonna use some alcohol and I'm gonna try to clean in between the pads. I will say that the rosin core that's within solder is always generally a bit more difficult to clean from the board than your normal like flux paste. So that was one side of the Q-tip and then we'll use the other side to just sort of like try to dry area. All right, so that was one Q-tip. I'm not going to do anything else to that. And we're going to use a brand new Q-tip and do the same on this side. Uh, and this white PCB is really, really great for this test because it, it lets us see just how much flux is still on the board. And you can see this one is giving me a little bit more trouble. It is also sort of a darker color, so it might show up on the board a little bit more. But yeah, there's after one Q-tip each, there's a little bit of flux still left here, even after some rigorous scraping with the Q-tip. So let's try to see if we can get that off with one more Q-tip. I mean, it really doesn't want to come off. Yeah, you can see that's like a little bit difficult to clean in there with just a Q-tip at least. So yeah, I would say, you know, like it is clearly using a little bit more flux within this solder than this other one. And overall, it's like slightly harder to clean. So let's try this now. I'm gonna go through and solder this right-hand side of these pin headers using the Saint Smart solder first, and then we'll try the caster on the opposite side. Cool, so the bottom row there is with the caster solder, and we can try to get this cleaned up as well. See, this is, this is actually pretty difficult to clean um, compared to the the other one. So I am going to have to say cleaning is sort of rough, <laughs> especially on these whiteboards. You can see every little bit of flux that's left behind. Um, but yeah, with a Q-tip, like some of this is just brutal to get off. All right. So we got these cleaned up and we can kind of take a look if there's any differences. And I, I just don't think there is. Again, like the flux was clearly very different, but in terms of how these types of solder are performed, I really, I really cannot tell the difference whatsoever. <laughs> now, the other thing I want to test is how much smoke each of these put off because solder wire actually does put off quite a lot of fumes, even compared to like normal flux and stuff, obviously depending on the kind of flux, but solder wire generally is very, very smoky. And I'm curious if one of these is more apparently smoky than the other. So let's give this a shot. I'm not gonna switch tips for this one just so we can quickly go between them. So let's hit this one here. You can see it's putting off, you know, fair bit of smoke. And now let's try this one here. Uh, and honestly, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, I can't really tell a difference. Like here's the Saint Smart one and here is the Hester one. Yeah, honestly, I really can't tell. Both are just very smoky and what I would sort of expect to see from solder wire. I do also want to test 
wicking again i don't expect this to be different whatsoever because uh, it's the exact same alloy and there's really like no difference at this point because the flux is gone so you know we're really just testing if, if the solder itself is wickable i guess <laughs> but like i don't see any reason for these to behave differently with wicking now that all of the flux or rosin core is gone by the way all of that flux there is from the wick itself the wick that i have here has flux in it so that's what that is that's not coming from the solder uh, what i am doing is i'm using the two different soldering iron tips still and i'm tinning the tips with the respective solder first we want to make sure the iron is able to transfer a maximum amount of heat into the wick uh, and again like yeah, just zero difference between these. That was just a technique error there. Let me just grab the rest of that. So yeah, again, like zero difference. As far as I can tell there, there's there's not really anything to say about that. The last thing I'll try here is, let's see how these behave with hot air. So I've got some 0402 caps here that we're gonna put in here and here. And on the left-hand side here, we can use the Sand Smart, just like that. And I'll leave the rosin on there, I guess in an event that there is some slight difference. And I changed my iron tip, and this is gonna be the Kester solder here. Got a little bit on that chip footprint down there, but no problem. All right, so I'm just gonna place a cap over each of these, and we're gonna hit these both at the same time with some hot air. And I'm just gonna evenly apply heat to both and see if either of these behave differently. So the left one there slid into place first, but I think the solder still melted on the right hand one here And if I just tap it, it'll go into place or not. That's interesting. Let's let's do that again So above we saw the left hand one same smart solder sort of pull the cap into place quicker uh, Okay, and they're both kind of like just doing what the second one did above where they're just kind of stuck I know the solder is liquefied i mean honestly i don't really see a huge huge difference i think that was just you know happenstance for the top there again this caster is just leaving this like brown residue i can't really get off uh, especially with the hot air baking it into the white pcb sort of similar to up here as well let's zoom in on on this and see if we can see any noticeable difference i do like the look of the right hand one a bit more but again, I can't really tell if that was just technique issues or if there actually is a difference between these two when it comes to uh, surface tension. So uh, my conclusion here is that they're the same solder. <laughs> it's clearly the same alloy. They behave very, very similarly across all of the tests I did, but I do actually prefer this one. And the reason for that is purely due to the fact that the rosin that is in this is just a little bit more annoying to clean. <laughs> And really that's it. I mean, like, otherwise these are essentially identical outside of the, you know, thickness of the solder wire. And if I had to buy one again personally, because I'm in Canada and this costs me quite a bit more, I would probably just go for this again. I'm really enjoying this Saint Smart solder, at least for my larger solder wire. I'll have a link to both of these in the description if you're interested. Uh, overall, I can definitely recommend either of these solders. These are both really great solders. I have nothing against this just because it has a bit more intense and higher flux content than this one does. It's just, you know, it's, it's part of what the product is. Uh, so I can't really fault it for that in any way. I just do prefer, I think, less flux. That's a little bit easier to clean because I always do use supplemental flux paste. Uh, the smaller amount of rosin does not bother me at all. And even if I'm not using flux, it does not seem to make any difference anyways. So let me know what you guys think. To be honest, outside of the flux, I'm pretty indifferent and I don't really understand the hype about Kester. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. So any of you Kester purists out there can, can correct me in the comments uh, if I made any mistakes. But yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.